week's video, we're going to look at problems from section 2.8. So let's get started. Let's suppose first that we have two functions. f of x is 4x squared plus 2x and g of x is 2x plus 1. We're going to look at operations with these two functions. So part A asks us to find f minus g of 4. There are several different approaches that you can take to working with the operations. Here's what I like to do. First, I'm going to find f of 4. So that means I take 4 and I plug it in place of x everywhere. Four squared is 16, and two times four is eight. Four times 16 is 64, and 64 plus eight is 72. Then second, I'm gonna find g of four. So I take the four and plug in place of g this time everywhere that there's an x. Two times four is eight, and eight plus one is nine. Then last, I have subtraction between my two functions, and so I subtract my two values here. f comes first, minus g, so 72 minus 9, and 72 minus 9 is 63. Look at part b. So part B asks us to find f plus g of negative 1. Again, I'm going to find f of negative 1 first. So I take negative 1 and plug it in place of x in f. Well, negative 1 squared is 1. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. 4 times 1 is 4, and 4 minus 2 is 2. Second, I find g of negative 1. So I'm going to plug negative 1 in place of x in g. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, and negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Then last, I have addition between my two functions, and so I add f plus g, and 2 plus negative 1 gives me 1. In part c, we're multiplying. Again, first I'm going to find f of 0. So I plug in 0 in place of x in f. Well, 0 squared is 0, and 2 times 0 is 0. 4 times 0 is 0 gives me 0. And then I find g of 0. So I plug in 0 for x in g. 2 times 0 is 0, and 0 plus 1 is 1. And then I'm multiplying, so I'd have 0 times 1 here, which is 0. In part D, we have division. Again, first I'll find f of 8, so I'll plug in at 8 everywhere that there's an x and f. Eight squared is 64, and two times eight is 16. Four times 64 is 256, I believe. And when I add 16 to that, I think I get 272. Then plug in eight for g, for x in g. Two times eight is 16, and 16 plus one is 17. 
And then last, I divide 272 divided by 17. And I don't think that that fraction simplifies. Oh, it has to be 16. <coughs> e and F deal with the composition of functions, and I'll come back and look at those two here in just a minute. Let's move on and look at number two, and we'll look at parts A through D of number two. So we have two different functions here. F of X equals X squared minus 3X plus 2 and g of x equals x minus 1. So part a asks us to find f minus g of x. So I'm going to subtract my two functions. Now this time I have an x rather than a value, so I'm not going to plug in any numbers here. f comes first, minus, and then g. Now make sure you put parentheses around each of your functions. Now that first function is understood to have a one in front. And so when I distribute the one, it doesn't change that function in any way. Then distribute the negative, gives us negative x and plus one. Put your like terms together, there's nothing like the x squared. Negative three x minus x is negative four x and two, plus one is three. And so we have x squared minus four x plus three. Part B asks us to add our two functions. And so we have x squared minus three x plus two plus x minus one. Now here, the parentheses are not as important, but I still put the parentheses around them to remind me that I have my first function plus my second function. Again, both of these parentheses are understood to have a one in front. And so when I distribute the one in front of the first parenthesis, I still get x squared minus three x plus two. And the one in front of the second parenthesis, I still get x minus one. Put your like terms together. There's nothing like that x squared. Negative 3x and plus x would be a negative 2x. And then 2 minus 1 is 1. And so our final answer is x squared minus 2x plus 1. Part C asks us to multiply the two functions. And so I have x squared minus 3x. plus two times x minus one. And here the parentheses are very important. Distribute the x squared to both terms in that second parentheses. x squared times x is x cubed. And I'm gonna come down just a little bit. And x squared times negative one is a minus x squared. Then distribute the negative 3x to both terms in the second parenthesis. So negative 3x times x is negative 3x squared, and negative 3x times negative 1 is a positive 3x. And last, distribute the 2. 2 times x is 2x, and 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Put your like terms together. There's nothing like the x cubed. Minus x squared minus 3x squared is minus 4x squared. 3x plus 2x is 5x. And then there's nothing like that minus 2. And so our answer is x cubed minus 4x squared plus 5x minus 2. Now look at part D. Part D asks us to divide. And so f goes on top, that's x squared minus 3x plus 2 over, and then g goes on the bottom, x minus 1. If possible, always simplify your fractions. So I'm going to factor that numerator. 
I need an x and an x in the first of my parentheses. My signs are both minuses, and factors of 2 would be 1 and 2. And if I were to check the outer, minus 2x, and the inner, minus 1x, that is that middle term of negative 3x. Then bring down the x minus 1 that's on bottom, and the x minus 1's cancel out, and leave us with x minus 2. Now, some of the problems are also going to ask for domain. And when I think about domain, I think about some of the basic shapes of our functions. So some of the basic shapes, we have what's called the identity function, which is y equals x is the parent function. This basic shape is a line. So here, because we have an arrow on the left, well, I'll come back to domain in a minute. Then we have our squared, and it's a parabola. And we have our cubed, which is an S-shaped. So I'm going to use these to help me find the domain of A, B, and C. So notice that A has an X squared. That would be a parabola. Because I have an arrow on the left side, the domain starts at negative infinity. And I have an arrow on the right side, the domain ends at positive infinity. And that's going to be true for both parts A and B because they both have that X squared. Now look at part C. Part C is that cubing function. Again, this one has an arrow on the left side, and so the domain starts at negative infinity. It's got an arrow on the right side, and so we move to positive infinity. Now part D is a little bit different. Granted, the x minus 1 canceled out, but I still have to consider this x minus 1 when I'm thinking about my domain. And so here, for my domain, I think about what's going to make that denominator 0. So I set that denominator equal to 0, and 1 is the value that would make that denominator 0. Now I can't plug in 1, but I can plug in anything less than 1 and anything greater than 1. 1 gets a parenthesis because I can't plug in 1 and make 0 on the bottom. Our domain then, the arrow points to the left, that's negative infinity, goes up to 1, join pieces with a union, and I pick back up at 1, and my domain goes to positive infinity. Now, I typically don't ask about the domain with the operations on test, but it's possible students are going to see that in the math labs. Now, let's think about the composition of functions. So I'm going to come back to problem number one. And look at parts E and F. Part E asks us to find f of g of negative 2. So what I typically tell my students is first to rewrite this problem. The f comes first, so it goes on the outside, then the g, and then the negative 2, and don't forget to close those parentheses. Then we start on the inside. And so on the inside of those parentheses, I have g of negative 2. Well, to find g of negative 2, I take negative 2 and plug it in place of x. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, plus 1 would be negative 3. Then whatever value I get in step 2, I'm going to plug here negative 3. in for x in whatever function is on the outside. So here it's f. So I have 4. I'm going to plug negative 3 in place of that x squared. The negative 3 is still squared. Plus and then 2, plug in negative 3 in place of that x. Negative 3 squared is 9. And 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. 4 times 9 is 36. And 36 minus 6 is 30. So let's look at part F. 
part f asks us to find g of f of 3. So again, I start by rewriting my function or my composition. The g comes first, so g goes on the outside, then f, and then 3. We always start on the inside. And on the inside here, I have f of 3. So that means I take that 3 and plug it in place of x and f. Three squared is nine, and two times three is six. So I'd have 36 plus six, which is 42. Then I plug whatever answer I get in step two, which here was 42, in place of x, and whatever function was on the outside. So here, g is on that outside. So I bring down the two, I plug 42 in place of x. Two times 42 is 84, plus one would be 85. So look at number two. Again, we're gonna look at parts E and F with our composition. In part E, we're asked to find F of G of X. I'm going to use the same steps that I used in number one. So first, I'm going to rewrite this. The F comes first, so it goes on the outside, open parentheses G, open parentheses X, and then close those two parentheses. Just like above in number one, we start on the inside. So inside here, I have g of x, and g of x is 2x plus 1. Now whatever I have in step 2 is what I plug in step 3. So here, I'm going to plug 2x plus 1 in place of x. And my outside function here was f. So I bring down the 4. I put 2x plus 1 in place of the x. Don't forget that squared. Plus, bring down the 2. And I plug 2x plus 1 in place of x. To square 2x plus 1, that means I multiply this by itself. So I have 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 1. And I'm going to bring everything else down. Use FOIL to multiply. So our first term here would be 4x squared. The outer is 2x, the inner is 2x, and the last is 1. And again, bring everything else down. And distribute. So I distribute the 4. 4 times 4x squared is 16x squared. 4 times 2x is 8x. 4 times 2x is 8x. And 4 times 1 is 4. Distribute the 2. 2 times 2x is 4x. And 2 times 1 is 2. 
Put your like terms together. There's nothing like that 16x squared, so I'm just going to bring it down. We have 8x plus 8x is 16x plus 4x would make 20x. And then we have 4 plus 2 is 6. And so our final answer is 16x squared plus 20x plus 6. Again, Math Labs may ask for domain. I've never asked for domain on a test, but Math Labs, you may see it. This one would again, the domain would be from negative infinity to infinity. This one is a parabola. And both of my starting functions had a domain of negative infinity to infinity. So look at part F. Part F asks us to find G of F of X. So first we rewrite. The G comes first, so G goes on the outside, and then F, and then X. We always start on the inside. So that means I start with f of x. And f of x here is 4x squared plus 2x. And then in step three, I plug in whatever I have for x, or in step two, I plug that in for x. in whatever my outside function is. So here that outside function again is G. So for G, I bring down, oh, and I apologize, I actually wrote down the wrong problem. Let me go back. I was looking back at the wrong problem. F of X, I'm sorry, was X squared minus three X plus two in number two. I wrote down the wrong problem. And so that's what I'm gonna plug in place of X in G. So for G of X, we have X minus one. So the X squared minus three X plus two takes the place of that X minus one. and then bring down the minus one. The parentheses go away here. Put your like terms together. There's nothing like the x squared. Bring down the minus three x, and then two minus one is one. And I'm going to have to apologize to you again because I realize I made the same mistake on part E. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up here to number two. And G of X, what I plugged in for G of X was wrong. We're going to let G of X be 2X plus 1. And that will fix the answer for our problem in number two. If you have a question about that, please let me know. All right, let's look at number three. For number three, we're asked to find and the, what we call the difference quotient. So here's our function that we're gonna use with the difference quotient. I use three steps in finding the difference quotient. So first, I'm gonna find f of x plus h. So I bring down the negative two, and I plug in x plus h in place of that x. Distribute the negative two, gives us negative two x and minus two h, and bring down the plus three. My second step, I'm gonna find f of x plus h minus f of x. 
Now my first step is as simple as I can get it because I don't have any like terms. This f of x plus h, this is my answer from part, from step one. So I'm just gonna go, go ahead and write that down. Minus this f of x is my original problem. And so that would be negative 2x plus 3. Don't forget to put these in parentheses. The first parenthesis has a 1 in front of it, so that parenthesis goes away. Distribute the negative, and that second parenthesis gives us a plus 2x and a minus 3. The negative 2x's cancel out, as well as the 3's, and that leaves us with a negative 2h. In step 2, every term that does not have an h should go away. And then step 3, I find the whole difference quotient. So this numerator here is what I had in step two. And so in step two, we have negative 2h. Bring down that h that's in the denominator. The h should, h's cancel, and they should always cancel, and leaves us with negative two. Now, since I messed up on number two, part E, let me go back and rework that one for you and work it correctly. So here are my two functions. And part E asks us to find f of g of x. So my first step is I rewrite The f comes first, so it goes on the outside, then g, and then x. Then I start on the inside. And on the inside, I have g of x, and g of x here is x minus 1. And then I plug in whatever I have in step two, so x minus one, in place of x. And notice here that my outside function is f. So that x minus one goes in place of the x. So rather than x squared, I have x minus one squared. Minus three, times x minus 1 and plus 2. Square that x minus 1, so that means I multiply it times itself and bring everything else down. Use FOIL. So our first term is x squared, the outer is minus x, the inner is minus x, and the last is plus 1. Distribute the negative 3 gives us a negative 3x and plus 3. And bring down the plus 2. Put your like terms together. There's nothing like the x squared. Negative x minus x minus 3x should be a negative 5x. And then we have 1 plus 3 plus 2 would be plus 6. And so our final answer would be x squared minus 5x plus 6. I'm going to scroll back up one last time to the mistake I made in part 2e above. The other thing I did, the other mistake I made right here, I looked back up at problem number 1 rather than problem number 2.
And so I used the wrong functions. I worked it correctly, but I used the wrong functions in 2e, and I apologize for that mistake. If you have questions from anything in the video, please let me know. Otherwise,